Hi, welcome to the Boston Roll Channel. I'm your host, Brian Koval. Before we get started, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. If you want to see me play your favorite deck or your spicy brew on the channel, I take donation deck lists. I'll do a deck tech, play a full Magic Online League, and help tune your list. If that sounds good, check out my contact info. It's in the video description below. Now let's go play some Magic. Welcome back once again to the Wash and Roll channel. Today I am playing Pioneer, and this is a really sweet Bant Enchantment Control deck from subscriber Paper. Paper called this deck Replenish, and I think that is a fair title to give this deck because Calyx, Destiny's Hand, is a four of in the deck, and so is Starfield of Nyx. And these both have something in common, which is throwing enchantments from your graveyard into play. So Starfield of Nyx, let's start with that one, because this is a weirdo. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may return target enchantment card from your graveyard to the battlefield. As long as you control five or more enchantments, each other non-aura enchantment you control is a creature in addition to its other types and has base power and toughness equal to its mana value. So this is an engine that recurs enchantments that have died or gone to the graveyard for various reasons over the course of the game, and eventually it turns into Opalescence, which is an insane card and just accrues value until it suddenly kills your opponent all in one shot. Calyx does a similar thing. The plus is look at the top four cards of your library, reveal an enchantment card from among them, put it in your hand. And the minus three is basically target enchantment becomes Oblivion Ring. So it's exile target creature or enchantment you don't control until target enchantment you control leaves the battlefield. So kind of weird wording. But it basically turns any random enchantment you have into an Oblivion Ring. And then the minus seven is return all enchantment cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. So that's the full Replenish. So this deck in Pioneer has both Replenish and Opalescence in it. Both of those are on the reserve list, legacy cards from history past, ancient times. If you watch my Shark Typhoon videos in Legacy, you may have seen actual Replenish get cast. And in Pioneer, we're actually doing pretty close to the same thing. So we have these engines that throw enchantments around. What enchantments are in the deck? So, of course, Baffling End. This is a Pioneer staple anyway. It's one of the best low-curve removal spells in the format. Search for Azkanta. That is an enchantment, and then it's a land that finds you more enchantments. So that was an innovation of mine that I'm pretty excited about. Grow Spiral. Uh, we're kind of a big, expensive deck. We have a lot of stuff happening at the 4 and 5 drop slot, so Grow Spiral is a no-brainer. These two are the, the, the backbone of the deck. So these are both sagas, which are enchantments, that make creatures, and then eventually sacrifice themselves. So once you get to chapter 3 of your saga, you get the effect, then the enchantment puts itself in the graveyard, which is where you want it for Starfield to end Calyx's ultimate to throw it back into play. So History of Benalia makes two knights before it goes away. The Raven's Warning. This is a cool card that... I drafted some called Heim, but not enough to really memorize all the rares in the set. And I was pretty impressed when I read this card. So chapter one is make a blue one, one blue bird creature token with flying and you gain two life. Chapter two is whenever one or more creatures you control with flying, deal combat damage to a player this turn, look at their hand and draw a card. So it replaces itself immediately with the bird token. It gains card advantage with the card you draw, plus the information of looking at their hand. And then chapter three is you may put a card you own from outside of the game on top of your library. Paper didn't have the full four of these in the original list that they sent me, but after reading that chapter three, I decided to build kind of around that. So this has a wish board basically, and it's any card, put a card you own, uh, not an enchantment card, not a gold card, just any card you own. So the entire sideboard is in play for game one if we want it. And after you look at your their hand, you should know what sideboard card is going to line up well against them. So let's take a detour over to the sideboard. Takatli Honor Guard, that's really good against Niv to Light and some other random stuff in the format. Archon of Sun's Grace, this is the only Constellation card in the 75. And the reason for this and the reason it's in the sideboard, rather than just like filling the deck with Eidolon of Blossoms and being an Enchantress style deck, is I really wanted to blank opposing removal in game one and get virtual card advantage out of the fact that they're going to have like fatal pushes and uh, 
wild slashes just like sitting in their hand without any good targets. But you can wish for it when you're ready to win. Sphere of Safety. This one is a banger. Creatures can't attack you or planeswalkers you control unless their controller pays X for each of those creatures where X is the number of enchantments you control. Mono Black is never going to attack you with this thing in play. They can't remove it. They don't play that many lands. And this is a lockout against a lot of aggressive decks if you could get it into play, which, I mean, it is a five mana spell. So that's going to be the hard part. But it is a lock. Elspeth Conquers deck. El I said deck. Elspeth Conquers Death. So this one is a little awkward because Chapter 3 only returns Calyx in your whole deck. Uh, but the first two chapters, if they're good, will still be good. And then it'll come back off Replenish later. Skylasher Spirits is the number one played deck in Pioneer. And Skylasher is really good at buying time against that deck. And buying time is all we're trying to do. We get up to Supreme Verdict. There's one in the main and one we can wish for to get that pressure off in the aggressive matchups. Destiny Spinner, that's another win condition. You can start firing up your lands into XX creatures where X is your enchantments when you're ready to win the game. Detention Sphere, uh, there's already four cast out, four Baffling End, and Calyx in the main deck, but in case we need another Oblivion Ring, here's one we can wish for. And then two Graft Digger's Cage for those pesky Phoenix and Luris decks. So this whole sideboard, mostly one of, there's a couple twos, but mostly one ofs, and that's from the Raven's Warning. I hope to do cool things with this. And then, of course, uh, cast out is just removal, and you can also cycle it. It puts itself in the graveyard, which is good for Starfield and for Calyx's ultimate. And then Shark Typhoon also. You know me. If you watch my channel, you know I love this card. Puts itself in the graveyard for Replenish and for Starfield, plus making a creature, plus drawing a card. This card had defined the standard format it was in, and it sees play all the way back to Legacy. So we know this card's good, and I'm really excited I get to play with it today. So that's the deck. It's kind of a contraption, and I hope we are able to assemble some wins with it. On the play in the first round, I've kept this nice, well-rounded hand. I got plenty of lands to play. I got Raven's Warning and Shark Typhoon. Also, a really cool thing that I didn't notice until right now, Shark Typhoon tokens do trigger Raven's Warning, because Raven Warning just wants one or more creatures you control with flying to deal combat damage. So if I sequence in a way that puts a Shark Typhoon token into play before I play the Raven's Warning, then they'll need two removal spells to stop me from drawing a card. So I think I am going to do that. If this looks like a five-color deck, probably Niv to Light. If it is Niv to Light, then maybe I want the Raven's Warning active early. So let's figure out how this works. Uh, I play this, I get a bird, and then if it tries to attack in that... Okay, yeah, I am going to cycle Shark Typhoon in the end step, so I have two birds. Or two flying creatures, at least. One of them is very much not a bird. Alright, so we have the fifth color in this rootbound crag. That's probably what's going on here. Yep, Oath of Kaya. That is a Orzov card. That's the kind of card that Niv Delight will play. So finding uh, what's its face, the uh, Takali Honor Guard might be important here. Ooh, that's interesting. I don't think I want to jam Calyx yet. I think I want to get the, the Saga Pump in. So I get my bird, attack for one flying. So I've played around one for one removal. If they have a sweeper, then chapter two is just going to pop off with no play. But I think that's fine. I still have Calyx to do Calyx things. But because I took the turn to Shark Typhoon, that means that my Honor Guard will be a turn late to stop Niv miss it. I guess we're going to get a look at their hand, see what that's about. Here come the jerks. Damage is done. I get a peek at their hand and draw a card. All right, so they have the bring. Shadow's Verdict. Exile all creatures and planeswalkers with mana value three or less from the graveyard. And all creature and planeswalker cards from all graveyards. Okay, sure. Uh, K Command, Dreadbore, Swamp. All right, so they do have the bring to light for five next turn. 
nothing I can really do about that. And I guess I can play Calyx. Uh, what does Calyx do for me? It draws a card. Sucks I've missed a land drop here. I could YOLO cycle cast out and hope for the best, but I don't think that's the play. Maybe overpowering this niv mizzet is the plan. Uh, two more histories and another Raven Warning. I can safely discard Baffling End. Oh, don't even have to discard. My hand display is just bigger than normal, so it looks like I should be discarding. Alright, so I didn't... If I draw a white source, though it doesn't matter because they're going to bring anyway, uh, but I was going to say if I draw a white source, I can wish for the the Magistrate or the Honor Guard and then cycle into it all in one turn, but it's not going to matter. Let's see if they go for Niv or if they have a Valky. All right, it is Niv. This isn't necessarily GG. It's just a big creature, which I have a lot of answers to. So they have... A second Dread Boar, a Knight of Autumn, Bring Delight, Nahiri. Uh, Valky does not go into the hand. They do have a Valky, though. I mean, could have assumed that, but now we know for sure. If they have to clean up, discard a card. Knight of Autumn's kind of scary. That means that Calyx is... Alright, I did find a white source. So, that means... I can wish for a an honor guard if I think that's what this game's going to be about. And Grafdigger's Cage doesn't do what I want it to. Uh, bring to like exiles the card, then cast it from exile. It doesn't cast it from your deck, so that doesn't help. All of these are kind of dangerous because oh, ECD is the one. Yeah, that's definitely the take. I I don't get it this turn. But I think that is the one, because this Knight of Autumn, It, if I take any of the Oblivion Rings, they play this Knight of Autumn, kill the Oblivion Ring, and then I've just, they Niv again. But how bad is that? It's probably pretty bad, right? So maybe I just play my... Oh wait, I can plus Calyx get... What am I doing? I'm working too hard here. Alright, there it is. So now I can ECD the Niv, and then keep my beatdowns coming. Okay, yeah. When my plan was to wish for Honor Guard, Calyx didn't get that one, but Calyx does get the ECD, so that is just like the full uh, Cunning Wish there. Just put a card in your hand. Now if they destroy Calyx, ECD is trick ticking up. And if they don't, he's uh, one turn away from going ultimate. And they have two dreadboards in their hand. I think they can figure it out. They can also just bring Delight again. Right, Knight of Autumn. They're going to destroy the Conquer. Yeah, that's mostly fine. It already did its job. Dreadboar, my Calyx. I've got another one. All right, so Dreadboar and Knight are accounted for. Kind of just want to keep drawing lands. Alright, I drew a land. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I can play Raven's Warning and History of Benalia and just sit on Calyx and cast out for the next thing. I could Baffling End the Knight. I could Calyx plus Baffling End and start taking that up again. They have the second Dread Boar, which makes that not the most exciting. Oh, I don't have Triple White, so I can't History and Warning. So I think I want to baffling end and warning and then just play my land tap for the turn so baffle that cast warning because the warning can set up the next answer to the next bring to light thing they do it's a pretty exciting game actually we're both just slamming hams onto the table nahiri can exile enchantments that is one of the the things that she does she'll die in combat on the way back if they do it, but that is a thing that she does. And this Bring Delight can just do whatever they want at any point. All right, four colors on this one. If they sweep this turn, then I don't get to draw a card off Raven's Warning, which is a good reason to sweep. 
it's interesting they cast it with four colors like are they just getting Valky or is it supreme verdict or did they just misclick on their five lands all right it is Valky there's Tibalt. they're going to get one activation of this and then i can cast it out all right they got two lands off of Tibalt, so that's actually fine that's really good for me just brick down spells i'll take that and sylvan Caryatid. that's not what you wanted there so now I get to attack for three and draw a card. Look at their hand again. I think I know their whole hand already, but I'll take another look. Not doing anything else. Attack my opponent. And I'm going to exile Tibalt with cast out. Okay, so I did. I hit my land drop. And these are, in fact, one, two, three, four. Uh, are these not the cards I thought they were? Oh yeah, they discarded this card, and they have a, a Bring Delight that I didn't know about. Okay, so I'm glad I got a look at their hand. Not that it matters a lot. Like, I can't really do anything different. Um, but I'm going to cast out the Tibalt. Get rid of this. And play Search for his Kanta. And play my land tapped. Pass the turn. I have the wish for something and then cycle to get it immediately line so depending on what they do this turn uh, my wishboard should be able to handle it this is the third bring delight of the game this one's probably going to reload with niv because i don't think their hand beats me yeah there it is hello big fella so no lands they got vanishing verse off of that that was a one card niv exiling my Search makes some sense. The Nahiri is kind of scary though, because again, that's the uh, you can't really cast out Niv Mizzet because they have Nahiri thing. Another Baffling End, cool. Yeah, Baffling End is one of those cards that it's your best card in many matchups and it's your worst card in others. So I could just Supreme Verdict. I could Destiny Spin. I could also I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. I could just go Archon of Sun's Grace and start to overload their removal. Like if they commit the Nahiri to something else, but I don't have four white mana. So again, yeah, maybe I need to rebuild the mana distribution in the deck or uh, I don't know. But yeah, I've been choked on white a lot. There are a lot of double white cards. So I could get Honor Guard now, but I don't think that matters. I could just Supreme Verdict to clear the board. But they have K Command that can pick it up. So yeah, that's that's tough. Uh I will I think I am still gonna get Honor Guard. I think that card is is good enough and this game's gonna go long enough. So I'll play a history of Benalia. And then my plan is to cast out the Niv. Uh I guess I should keep pressure on. Yeah, they get to block and kill one of these, that's fine. So my plan is to cast out the Niv. Hopefully they'll commit Nihiri before that, or I'll just do it in the end step where I get a turn to get my Honor Guard into play as well. But then they can Dreadbore plus Nihiri and just re-Niv. It's tough, tough stuff. Oh, Omnath is also in this deck. Yikes. Okay. All right, Omnath popping off here. I guess that makes sense. You're already playing five colors. Might as well put every busted card in. Okay, so they've committed Nahiri. That's good. That's what I needed to happen. So now I can start casting things out. All right, so they exile this. They get their Valky back. It does have to be actual Valky. I have no creatures in my hand for them to steal. But I can cast out niv -Mizzet And then Calyx something else and then attack nihiri to dead so we're going to cast out niv which is for all the reasons i've described for the entire game a little dangerous but I've worked this down as low as we can go i'm drawing to kotli on our guard getting a token off of that and then uh, baffling end can hit valky calyx can hit omnath Ugh. <laughs> this is this is dangerous, but I'm in. 
So exile this and attach it to baffling end, I guess. And then exile this. My opponent just said in the chat, what am I playing against? That's the brewer's advantage. I'm going to drain two from the Kaya's Guile here. Uh, I did just play into Fatal Push, but I don't think they have it. Okay, so they can Dreadbore Calyx, but doesn't really matter. Uh, they can also K Command deal two to Calyx, pick up. Oh, there are no nibs in the graveyard. I've exiled them all. Nice. That was smart of me. All right, Slafter Games. Oh, that's why they asked, what am I playing against? Because they have Slaughter Games in their hand. All right, so they, they could just name Honor Guard and take the card they know is in my hand. Uh, they named Elspeth Conqueror's Death. I only have one of those in the 75, and it's already in the graveyard. So, you got me. But now they see my whole deck. They know what the plan is. Should have named Starfield of Nyx, apparently. So this coming turn, I am attacking for 10. and putting them to 1. So that's that's a lot of damage. Uh, with the, the History of Benalia popping off, it's 4, 8, 9, 10. So they have to make some blocks. Or kill some creatures. Oh, they dreadboard my knight. I mean, I, yeah, they can Kolagon's Command Calyx at their leisure, so I guess that doesn't really matter. Dreadboar kills Calyx, or it kills, or K Command does. Like, they both kill both things, so that didn't actually matter. I hope they get distracted by the knights, though, and don't kill Calyx. Nope, didn't fall for it. Target player discards a card. Yeah, I don't need this baffling end. All right, so I no longer have a lethal attack. Or well, I didn't have a lethal attack anyway, but... Ooh, the beginning of your upkeep. Okay, so not yet. So I'm going to attack for six, put them to five, and then deploy all of my shit. The starfield's in play. Oh, I didn't even do the math. Like, I was only one enchantment away from my creatures being a lethal attack this turn. Didn't even think about the, the second half of the text on this card. Glad it didn't matter. Yikes. But I am attacking with five enchantments next turn. Utter end. Boo. Okay, fine. Fine. All right, another caryatid. They're down to one card in hand. And they dreadboard a shark token that drew a card and attacked a bunch of times already. That's a good deal. All right, Calyx. Let's just keep hitting bangers. I guess I should leave double white up. I have mentioned a number of times already in the league that double white matters. Starfield or Raven Warning. I'm going to get the Raven's Warning. I actually think that just does more here. Or at least like another flyer. My opponent is kind of tilting off. The top decks are endless. Bella, you've resolved three Bring Delights this game. You got two Niv Mizzets and a Valky. And I've pushed through it. Like, I am grinding you. That's what's happening right now. All right, so here comes these two. Oh, should have plussed Calyx before combat in case I hit Starfield. That would have been a lethal attack. Blew it. All right. I got to remember that that line exists in the deck now that I'm being aggressive. Uh, yep. Whoops. All right, so white. Another Raven's Warning. I'm actually not going to play Starfield now uh, because if they have Supreme Verdict or something in their deck, I don't want to lose my entire board. If I had drawn it pre-combat, it should have. I could have won that turn. Whoops. All right, so the Baffling Ends are coming out of the deck. Uh, they don't do a lot. Uh, I think I like. I I think I want one Honor Guard in the deck and then another. In the board to wish for if necessary. Uh, Conquer's Death can come in, though wishing for it does line up well. Wishboards are hard to sideboard with <laughs> for, for these reasons. Right. Uh, I can bring an Archon into the main. Maybe I just put, put both in the main. Uh, they're just a lot better than Baffling End is the thing. And I still want at least one Detention Sphere I can wish for. Uh, Skylasher does block niv it infinitely, just not a thing. niv it and Omnath both are completely under control by Starfield, or by Skylasher. Uh, is that enough reason to do that? I think I do want to wish for the ECD. 
Uh, one thing I can do here is, having seen Slaughter Games, I can put a Starfield in the sideboard, so I have one I can wish for when I'm ready, and they can't slaughter it. I think I like that play. I don't really like piling my deck full of Skylashers, because they're not super good. Uh, Graftrigger Gage, like I said, doesn't do anything in the matchup. I think I actually just want the Honor Guards in the main. Uh, it takes them off the wish board menu, but like we saw, the the wish doesn't line up well with Bring to Light anyway. I think this is what I want to do. One Starfield in the board to wish for, and the rest, in we go. Alright, so is one of these the blue one? Okay, yes. So I can Growth Spiral twice this game. That's pretty good. So the reason I have to board out a Starfield is that uh, Slaughter Games, Exile is a game zone. Like cards that say a card you own from outside the game, they don't mean in Exile. There was a time when, before Exile was Exile, back when it was removed from the game, that was a different thing. Uh, but now, Exile being a game zone is not outside the game. So you do have to, your sideboard is the only place that is considered outside the game in a sanctioned game of magic. All right, so I'm going to get to grow a spiral at least once. I would like to find another green source before I do. All right, no love there. Because uh, using my white source as a green source kind of sucks. Because, like I said last game, I've been pretty choked on white mana. They have a caryatid. Hope to draw some lands because it's, they're going to bring delight here. All right, found a land. And then I can go again. And all right, this is going to come in tapped because I can't do anything else with it. All right, uh, we missed one of those gross spiral lands, but we do did still pass turn three with four lands in play. I guess I can represent Mystical Dispute here. Maybe I should actually just be playing Mystical Dispute. I am a blue deck. Yeah, they're not even going to hesitate. Just jam right into that Mystical Dispute. Yep, wish I had one. <laughs> okay, lesson learned. All right, so they got one card off their Niv, and it was Vanishing Verse. All right, not bad. I mean, it's still a 6-6, six, six, but I have the Sky Lasher. Uh, really wanted to find a land there. So what's the play? I could cycle cast out trying to hit a land, but that doesn't really do what I needed to. Calyx doesn't do anything here. I could Shark Typhoon make a 1-1 one, one, try to find a land, and that does do what I want it to. So I'm going to leave the green up. Come on, deck. Give me a land. Got there. All right, so that, that used my mana pretty well. Hopefully they just jam the vanishing verse on my shark because if i can get skylasher in and blank this niv it forever that would be pretty cool all right so they're gonna attack i am gonna flash in skylasher honestly if this eats a vanishing verse i could do a lot worse than that i can still block with shark if i feel like i need to block all right yep not bad it's a good deal where i come from i can absorb six damage here and they're down to three cards in hand. Finding the land was a, a really good one because now I can Raven Warning and History. I am not going to deal with this Niv Mizzet until I have to. Like, I want to be on board and not just playing from behind. Your life total is a resource. Use it. Right, so they had another Vanishing Verse for my History. I am not going to block this time because I want a flying attacker to draw a card with. Let's get in there with my flying attacker. Is it good? My knight has Vig. I guess I should have attacked with it. It doesn't cost me anything. All right, so they have Knight of Autumn, a third Vanishing Verse, and Dreadbore in their hand right now. So you can't Vanishing Verse Calyx. You can Dreadbore it. Uh, none... Knight of Autumn, yeah, they basically, their removal lines up extremely well against everything I want to do right now. But they did indicate willingness to just fire off Vanishing Verses on History of Benalias. So this cast out might have a chance to navigate into a winning position, or at least remove the, the Niv from play. So Knight of Autumn, 
Which one's that going to destroy? All right, destroying that is just fine with me. Let's hope they vanishing verse my history as well. Then I get to cast out Niv with impunity. I'm going to take six first. All right, they are not interested in that play. Search for his Kanta. Maybe that can trick them into playing Vanishing Verse. Basically, we're dancing around this Vanishing Verse for the rest of the game right now. Uh, I do have this bird that can block for a turn. And I have Calyx also. So I'm going to play Calyx and plus and see what happens. I can't minus because all my enchantments are going to die anyway. I'll at least draw a card off it. Or just put four lands to the bottom. Build Augur of Bolas special. I'm going to attack with my knights that I have. Uh, actually, oh yeah, they have Vigilance, it's fine. I was about to say, Dreadbore plus Vanishing Verse removing my two blockers is lethal, but that's not true because I have Vigilance on my creatures. I play the Search for Iskanta, and then Temple Garden tapped. A cycling Triumph, that's fair. Okay, so they have... That doesn't change any information. We are I already knew they had a random card, Dreadborn and Vanishing Verse. If they can find two damage, I have taken a lot from this Niv at this point. Alright, Omnath's pretty good. I feel like they probably have to Dreadbore Calyx because they're so far ahead. That and like that's the kind of card that can catch me up. Or not, that's fine. I'm definitely gonna block here with my bird. That bird gained two life, did two damage, drew a card, and now it's about to gain six more life. That's a deal. You've done well, little birdo. Thank you for your service. And they did attack Calyx, not me, even though I'm at eight. Not that I think that's a bad play, it's just something worth noting. I'm going to plus Calyx and put four cards on the bottom of my deck again. Ouch. So here come my knights. I don't think they're going to trade Omnath for some knights. That seems kind of insane to me. All right, and then history. Another one. They have Dreadbore and three mystery cards in hand now. Uh oh. Oh, here comes this. They cast it for five, and they already have a Niv in play, and they didn't attack. All right, that exiles all my creatures, sure. And also Sylvan Karyatid. That gains four life. So I don't think they can kill Calyx this turn. They should be going face right now, because as far as they know, they have lethal. I have a spell. Exile Niv. I go to four. Come on, Calyx. Let's figure this out, buddy. Ooh, that's not bad. So I could exile Omnath and tie it to the cast down. Or... I think I want to tie it to the star field so they have to diversify their removal. All right, there we go. The board's empty, but any like disenchant just pops the hell off. <laughs> that's that's playing with oblivion rings for you. Right, so they have dreadbore and one one unknown card. Gotta hope it's not a disenchant. Please cast Sylvan Karyatid. Right, dreadbore Calyx, that's fine. And cast Sylvan Karyatid, they're empty. And now it's time to Starfield. Uh, so one, two, three. I want the Raven back. I want to gain some life and get that pop in. And because this comes back in my upkeep, I think I go to chapter two immediately. Yeah, that is how that works. Weird. Uh, I mean, that means I don't get a flying token. Or I don't get to draw a card off the flyer next turn. But I do get to wish for something immediately this hallowed fountain is fine in my hand i think bluffing something is worth more than just having a land around and they scooped it up wow that was insane we beat four niv mizzets and a valky over two games that was awesome on to the next round on the play in the second round i have a hand with no white mana but i've kept it it has search for his kanta and grow spiral in it those are both pretty good cards so i'm gonna pass and I am going to lead on Search for Iskanta. Search takes time to get going. Like the advantage Search builds up is cumulative the longer it's in play. Growth Spiral will do the same thing any turn I cast it. Uh, accounting for 
the ramp. Like, my deck's pretty mana hungry, and I have five drops. So, like, going specifically from uh, two mana to four mana isn't really an essential jump in the deck. I'd steal Overseer. So, this is a matchup where I'm going to want to uh, prison them out. Whether it is. All right. No, I, I want to keep all my lands. So, whether I end up. Um, Supreme verdicting them or the the other thing, the sphere of safety. Like sphere of safety seems like it's probably gonna do some work here. Yeah, unfortunately the overseer is gonna be a step ahead of my shark here. I, I could have blocked with a one one shark, but didn't have it obviously. Okay, so probably should have played brooding pool there in case I hit Temple Garden here. Then I could make white without taking damage. But that's not what happened. So looking for white sources now. All right, nope, keep that one. All right, so at the beginning of your upkeep, you may return target. So there is no opportunity for me to cycle cast out before the starfield's going to trigger. So I'm just going to shock this in right now and exile steel overseer before it gets any bigger, before or before the board gets any bigger. Yeah, Metallic Rebuke was uh, a problem there, but the real issue is that Steel Overseer, if I wait for their upkeep, gets to tap anyway, so probably took some extra damage there. Like, they wouldn't be able to cast Psy if I did that, but then they would have been able to activate Overseer. So I'm basically on Supreme Verdict or Bust here, and there is one in the main deck, but I don't have double white to cast it yet. Uh, yes, put Shark Typhoon in the graveyard. Right, so there's the double white. So I can make a 4-4 Shark and trade off with this Stone Coil Serpent this turn. I think these star fields are just going to get run over. Like, if, if I don't find Supreme Verdict, like exactly Supreme Verdict, basically right now. Okay, so they put a counter on each artifact. So I can make a 4-4 Shark and then make decisions. Another Typhoon in the bin. All right, Baffling End answers this Stone Coil Serpent. So I'm actually just going to block this one. And so that, now I still have a Shark in play for next turn. I can Baffling End 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. If I find an untapped land, I can Baffling End and Starfield. And that's actually pretty insane. Uh, history in the graveyard. No use for that. Oh, a second Baffling End is insane. Like I said last round, there are matchups where Baffling End is your best card and Baffling End is your worst card. And this is definitely a best card matchup. Okay, they're going to fare in response. What are they looking for? And are they ready for the second Baffling End? All right, they, they're setting up with a second Overseer. Let's get control of this board real quick. Uh, if, I if I don't exile... So if I exile Psy, they have a lethal attack with Mutavault, which obviously I can't abide by. Uh, if I don't exile Psy, they get a token off Steel Overseer, but obviously I'm going to take the line that results in me not losing the game immediately on board. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, Search for Escanta is not going to flip this turn. All right, but this Shark is holding the fort for now. I'm dead on board next turn, so search for his Ganta. Come on, help me out here. Find the Supreme Verdict. I put Starfield in the bin. That's not what I'm looking for. Cast out is totally what I'm looking for. So can I trick them? One, two, three, four. I, I guess I'm going to have to. Am I dead to an attack anyway? So one, two, three, four. I guess I have to just cast out here if they have another metallic rebuke i lose but if they don't all right one two three four they can put me to one if they just all in here okay sack to artifacts to draw a card that makes sense all right and next turn my star field actually just puts uh a million power and toughness onto the board so i'm hoping to uh still be alive at that point 
I lose to uh, Scissors here. Antiquities War. Okay. Uh, that's a slow burn. That's slower than Starfield's going to be. So that card is really good, and I love it. Shadow Spear. Plus one, plus one, Trample, and Lifelink. Those are all good words. All right, so... I am not going to bin this. Uh, there's already a cast out in the graveyard. And I don't want Search to flip, because I need five enchantments in play. Uh, no. I do actually want this card, and then... All right, here we go. The Opalescence is live. Any, like, removal spell turns my enchantments into not creatures anymore. This is a lot of power and toughness on board, though. And I'm here for it. The Springleaf Drum generates another Thoppy. I can jump cast out out of the graveyard in my next upkeep with the Starfield. Starfield's also stack. It's not a legend, and I can return two enchantments per turn. And they animate each other. So the second Starfield's pretty good, actually. Oh no, they found the scissors. Oh wait, no, they're still one short. No, no, they're not, because they can equip Shadow Spear. Yeah, th that's exactly lethal. Fuck. Uh, did they equip that correctly? Three, four... Yeah. Exactly lethal. One, two, three, four, five, yep. Bummer. That was close. <laughs> A lot closer than it really had any right to be, based on how the game started. I just realized my opponent's username is Tezzy. I should have assumed that they were doing something like this. Okay, so Sphere of Safety, one of them comes into the deck, one stays in the board. Archon of Sun's Grace, one of those comes in, one stays in the board. Supreme Verdict's in, Detention Sphere is in. I just want all my removal in the deck. Like, I don't want to have to wish for it. Because uh, I'm going to wish for, like, Sphere of Safety or Archon of Sun's Grace, something that will end the game outright. I'm not trying to fart around with this other stuff. History of Benalia is okay but not actually exciting. Uh, Starfield, I don't want to draw two of them like I did that game. That was actually pretty devastating. And Shark Typhoon's great. Maybe I don't even want two Starfields. Or three Starfields. So yeah, like two sounds like the right number. And History of Vanalia also seems pretty medium, just in general. So it, is that actually the worst card? Because it does gum up the board pretty well. Maybe I don't need three Calyx. Though so Calyx, Calyx's Oblivion Ring ability is really good in this matchup, where so many other things are zero zeros or tokens, where exiling them, it just makes them gone. As far as I'm concerned, the two drops are untouchable. The Raven's Warnings are also untouchable. Shark Typhoon, untouchable. Maybe Arcan of Sun's Grace doesn't actually belong in the main deck. So 3-4 Flying Lifelink is a, a beating. I actually just think it's History of Benalia is the worst card left here. So here's my deck. Oh, this hand's great. I'm going to keep it. This has everything I want. It has the, the Baffling End into the Raven Warning, bridging all up into Supreme Verdict. Uh, it just needs a second white source to really go off. But there's never mulliganing this hand. Opponent's got the Ornithopter to kick it off. Alright, so why do you keep Ornithopter in a hand? I could wait until they commit a, a scissor to it, but I'd rather just protect my life total. Let's just get this thing out of here. With Supreme Verdict looming, like I, I'm totally fine just taking weird 1 for 1 trades early to protect my life total and make sure I get to the Supreme Verdict, because I think that card will win the game on the spot. So I'm going to play the Warning to get my bird, gain my life. Let's see if they can produce a flyer. I mean, Ornithopter also blocks bird on curve, which is one of the considerations I made. Ooh, do they want to attack with Steel Overseer? Skip me drawing a card. I would take an attack from Steel Overseer to draw a card. All right, they decided against it. All right, so bird gets to go bird, do bird things. Drawing a card before I grow Spiral would be nice, because that gives me a chance to actually hit the land drop. All right, the bird thing happens. Their hand is Insole, Insult, Stroke, Karn. 
Aren't pretty strong. So Disdainful Stroke is really good. It does not counter Growth Spiral, though. All right, I'm just going to pass. They can beef up their fella. I wish I could remove. Or I guess, no, they had the Disdainful Stroke. Uh, yeah, I can just cast out the Karn. Let's see what mode they use with it. All right, they are making the Construct. That's fine. Can I defeat Karn in combat fair and square? Or is this the thing I need to cast out? Right, I'm going to Growth Spiral now, figure out what else is going on. I can cast out on my turn, basically, for the, the same value. Uh, yes, let's use this ability. I want... what do I want? I think I want Archon. Or no, I want ECD. Is that what I want? So they have two in Souls, Disdainful Stroke in hand. No, I want the Sphere of Safety. That's what this game is about. And then answer Karn right now. I guess I probably should have just jammed the Starfield, and then I don't care about Disdainful Stroke anymore. But the Supreme Verdict mops up the board, and Disdainful Stroke doesn't do anything with that. And their hand is two in Souls, which are really bad when my plan is Supreme Verdict. And I am going to chump block Construct this turn. Or 5-5, five, five, like whatever is the biggest thing. So they just tapped out of... That's interesting. They tapped out of Disdainful Stroke when they know my top card is Sphere of Safety. All right, I mean, I'm still gonna Supreme Verdict. So Sphere is 3. They have 1, 2, 3. Maybe I just want to get the Sphere into play. Yeah, right now while they tapped out, I'm I'm taking my spot here. They can attack me for seven this turn, and then I wrath, and then they're locked under sphere forever. And this disdainful stroke is just gonna rot in their hand. And if I draw a land where I can Supreme Verdict and Raven's Crime or Raven's Warning this turn, that would be pretty cool. I guess I could lose if they have some generic bounce spell, just return target permanent to its owner's hand, and then crunch for uh, 7, 13. There's another Springleaf Drum. They can still only pay to attack with one creature. So they get in for 7, I Supreme Verdict them, and then, then we win. Alright, so they paid for the, the toll, they tapped the, the Overseer. I drew an untapped land, that's what I wanted. Bam. Play the white side of this. Raven's warning. And I think this game is over. Plus I'm sitting on Starfield. I know they have Disdainful Stroke, but if they add to the board, that taps them off of Stroke. Yeah. That does have Reach, so that denies me my sweet, sweet card draw. But Starfield is gonna do plenty here, because it is actually active. Green, blue. And then... Attack with all my shit. Not this one. Alright, attack with everything that's big enough to attack. Alright, protection from multicolor. Smart. <laughs> my bad. I don't think it's going to matter, but that wasn't great. So they can cast in soul on this thing and make it an 8-8. Eight, eight. If they have a land, they can attack for 8. That's pretty good. Okay, Karn is also fine. And they can Disdainful Stroke, but I don't think I care at this point because Starfield is active. And you can't stroke a Baffling End. So I can Baffle the Construct and get back Raven, which makes a bird immediately, then it goes to Chapter 2 immediately. So if one of my things connects, they're out of here. If they don't float mana in response to Baffling End... Then I can also Calyx. I guess I'm probably supposed to exile this with Baffling End so I can Calyx the other thing. Yeah, that wasn't great. It's alright. I'll figure it out. I'm going to attack my opponent with all my creatures. If they, they either have to let me draw a card or they die. I definitely had lethal this turn if I just slowed down and thought about it. Alright, they, they somehow decided to take a dead on board lethal attack. 
Maybe they determined it didn't matter. All right, game three. Uh, that setup seemed pretty good. Wishing for the sphere of safety was nice. Karn really did just shut the game down. Karn is something worth noting. So the Conquer, I do like having the, the ECD in the wish board for Karn. And History of Benalia did feel like the correct card to leave out of the deck. So yeah, same deck right back in. This hand is a little slow, but I'm going to keep it. It does have a growth spiral and a cast out, or it has two removal spells and a growth spiral. So I think that's a reasonable hope for a hand. And Calyx is above average in this matchup because they have very few answers to enchantments. All right, a serpent for two. Ooh, also a one drop, the witching well. Sure, that's pretty cool. I love artifact decks, like really into what they're doing right now. I'm into what I'm doing too, don't get me wrong, but what they're doing is is pretty sweet. I want to find a land between my draw step and the grow spiral draw. Like jumping from two mana to four mana, this game is gonna be a huge deal. That is a change of plans. I'm gonna exile this right now before it picks up a scissor, before it enables anything off of the springleaf drum. Like let's just get it out, change of plans. And this bridges me into Detention Sphere, which will bridge me into Cast Out. Maybe we just play this whole game and never cast Growth Spiral. <laughs> that would be pretty funny. Oh, this is a Karn. Sure. So I'm going to Detention Sphere Karn. Probably. Okay, so I do have all my mana set up now. I can Detention Sphere Karn, or I can Growth Spiral this turn, and Detention Sphere the Construct the two constructs next turn but i would take five in the meantime but now i think grow spiral just isn't the plan yeah i think i have to answer karn right now let's get that out of here all right karn's gone uh yes i'd like to use the ability please what a weird question to ask i guess they had to put a man there to avoid infinite loops right, so Taken four from this construct at least, maybe more. Backup Karn. Bummer. Now I wish I saved my detention sphere. And so we're going to have to answer these constructs in play. And it's going to hurt because I have to shock in to do it. Yikes. If I, I, I'm dead to an artifact, if, I guess I should probably play Calyx. Do I lead on Calyx here? Exile target creature or enchantment. Yeah, that, that would count as a creature or an enchantment. Yeah, actually, them having the second Karn might just end this game uh, because the, the D-Spheres... D-Sphere and Supreme Verdict are my answer to multiple constructs, and having drawn Mono Shock Lands this game, I have done... Uh, I'm going to do up to four damage to myself, which is a whole attack from one of these constructs. Guess I have to shock this in though, and I do want to play Calyx actually because that one is likely to distract them with an attack. Like cast out, they still just do the same thing and attack me. But I can exile this construct. They'll probably want to attack Calyx down, which effectively gains me some more life. And if they don't, it lets me plus and try to find some more outs to this, but not looking good. They made another 0-0 zero, zero and played Springleaf Drum. All right, they're just going face. They, they probably have Metallic Rebuke in their hand, and they just don't care what I'm doing, which is a reasonable position to have. Looking for Baffling End probably here. All right, found it. So I can shock in... I and mean, I'm still dead. Like, even with the baffling in, they still just attack for five, and that's the game. Ouch. And I can't play around Metallic Rebuke anyway, because shocking it in definitely makes me dead. But yeah, I'm just literally just dead on board anyway. Did my best. Wasn't good enough. All right, you attack for five, and that's the game. Okay. Uh, I guess I could cycle into another baffling end. I'm not quite dead. So cycle into Baffling End is a play. All right, that wasn't Baffling End. Now we're dead. All right, GG's.
Yeah, that was pretty cool. Uh, their deck was really powerful. Um, they got under me with the the sideboard Karns. If I, in perfect hindsight, if I knew they were going to have a second Karn, then the detention sphere is obviously a lot worse. And I could, I think, I in like again, perfect hindsight. I, I don't think this was not was a misplay necessarily. But if I knew everything that would happen on the timeline, I think we had the tools to win that game. But uh, it didn't work out this time. All right, on to the next round. On the draw for the third round, I'm going to mulligan this hand that doesn't do anything till turn four. And I'm going to keep this hand with early plays. I think I'm going to ship Calyx. Yeah, that seems like the the card that could is most likely to end the game still in my hand. Oh, this is a good matchup to have my one of Supreme Verdict in the opener. Finally playing against Spirits. Uh, it looks like it's Bant Spirits. My opponent just said they enjoy my videos in the chat. Uh, opponent, uh, Eggy216. I had the Supreme Verdict. I play one of these in the main. I'm sorry. You not, sorry, not sorry. I am trying to win, but at the same time, here's this card. Let's see if they can goldfish me before I cast it. Though, I guess that doesn't matter with... Uh, that card that they have, Spell Queller. Yeah, Queller does Exile Supreme Verdict. So, all right, never mind. I don't apologize. You're probably just fine. And the green mana indicates that they have Collected Company in their deck. Right, Empyrean Eagle. That's a, a big boy. Bird Spirit. I mean, the Baffling End is nice. Drawing a land that didn't hurt me was also nice. I do think that Cycling Shark Typhoon. I, I lose two life by Shocking in Breeding Pool, but I'm going to gain at least those two back, probably more, with the with the block. Yeah, now I'm just dead to Spell Queller. All right, I was talking a lot of shit about that Supreme Verdict, but that that's not actually a card that matters much here. And even if they don't hit Queller, or don't have Queller, they can just let Verdict resolve and then company me. So I'm definitely... Yeah, this sucks. <laughs> I'm going to lose. I'm going to die with Supreme Verdict. And I, I'm going to cast it because that puts them in the position of do you want to try to company into the Queller or do you want to let this resolve and then company to rebuild? Of course, if they just have Queller, it doesn't matter. Okay, please miss, please miss, please miss, please miss. This is a blowout if it hits the Queller in... in their direction and it's a blowout in my direction if they miss because then they just lose their collected company too i guess selfless spirit also plays oh they did it all all right i'm dead okay okay all right talking shit but spell quality's busted all right time to sideboard bring in those sky lashers all right so the supreme verdict comes in i want to draw it i don't want to have to wish for it i think i want one of the archons in the deck and then Probably want these Grafdinger's Cages to turn off Collected Company. Skylasher comes in. Uh, Takali Honor Guard does turn off Spell Queller and Rattle Chains. I want one of the spheres to draw and I can wish for the other one. All right, that's a 10 card sideboard. I think that Starfield is just not even really part of the plan here. I can wish for it if I want to, but it's a 5 drop in a very fast matchup. I think Calyx is kind of slow and bad too. And then History of Benalia doesn't interact with the board in any meaningful way. Then I think it's just another Calyx. And, and I'm leaving all the, the flying blockers and removal in. But Calyx is also kind of removal. Maybe it's Search for his Kanta. Alright, so Search for his Kanta. Maybe... I actually want all my Calyxes, or maybe I want a third Calyx over Search for Kanta, because it is a removal spell, even though it's a four drop. Yeah, I I don't feel good about that, but I think, I guess with the Skylashers, that does buy me a bunch of time over the course of a game. So let's let's hope for the best here. Okay, so I have the Supreme Verdict again. Uh, I have Gross Spiral to ramp into it, and I'm on the play. All of these things are good for me. And I don't have to take damage right away. They can decide if they want to sack their Mausoleum Wanderer. Okay, 
they don't have Mausoleum Wanderer. They have Spectral Sailor. So I'm not even going to give them the chance to sack Mausoleum Wanderer. I'm just going to grow Spiral on my turn. And put in Hallowed Fountain Tap to pass the turn. So now I have a turn 2 Supreme Verdict if I want it. And I have Raven's Warning that can at least absorb some damage and challenge the air. I could turn 2 Cast Out. That's more likely than turn 2 Supreme Verdict, I guess. So they're attacking with Sailor. This looks like a Rattle Chains to me. So I'm just going to play Raven Warning. So Calyx, jamming Calyx on this board is pretty nice. I'm going to play the blue half of this land and then cast Calyx. Yeah, Calyx just piles a bunch of Planeswalker loyalty, starts drawing cards. In, they have li explosive lines where they can put a bunch of damage on the board very quickly. All right, but next turn I can Baffling End a creature and Raven's Warning and tie a second creature to the, the Baffling End. And if they dump a bunch of stuff into play, like even the even a Lord, like even the Eagle. Oh no, that is exactly five. Never mind. Yeah, so if they play the Eagle at, to pressure Calyx, that plays them into Supreme Verdict. So I, yeah, I, I like the sequence and how that lined up. That was great. So I am actually going to get to Verdict. I don't think there's anything in Pioneer that messes me up when they're tapped out. Let's get rid of those. Play Temple Garden. All right. Passing turn four at 19 life on an empty board where I'm up two lands on my opponent. That feels good. Ooh, they don't have Collected Company. They might have Spell Queller, though. I don't care if they do because they've seen my Baffling End in my hand. Like, go ahead, Quell this. I will exile your Queller and just get it right back. Deal. So they exile that. I exile this. Then here comes the warning anyway. All right, cool. We did that. And my hand is a removal spell and a cantrip. I clave apparition. What do you take? Raven's warning? Okay, cool. Ooh, baffling in. So I can baffle that, get a 3-3. I think I like that. Though they are representing rattle chains right now. 1-2. Yeah, so if they have rattle chains, I can respond with cast out and still get the creatures. All right. Now I'm feeling like I'm pretty far ahead. They have two cards left in their hand. I'm going to leave up cast out so I have an instant on their turn. And I can grow spirals also an instant, so I'll just spiral if they don't do anything I care about. One card left over there. I'll go for the cast out. If they have spell queller, I'd at least like to know that their hand is empty. Or rattle chains. Either way, let's just get this hand empty and work it out from there. Okay, mystical dispute. Cool. They're Hellbent. Yes, Sphere of Safety. Green, blue. I'm not going to cast Sphere of Safety yet. I don't want them to necessarily know that's in my deck if I don't have to show it to them. And I am going to attack with my 3-3 Illusion. That's the biggest creature on the board. And we get to play another Warning here. Another bird. And then I can attack, Chump Attack with the two birds next turn to draw a card. Any sort of flash spirit will mess that up, but whatever. I'm willing to take that chance. Or collected company would also get me. All right, looks like they don't have it. What's in your hand? Temple Garden is in their hand. That card is not great. All right, bang, bang. And play this tapped. I am not going to play the Sphere of Safety. I don't want them to know that that's a card they have to think about. And I think I'm winning this game without it. I get to make a wish this turn. What am I wishing for? I think getting Starfield of Nyx is fine here. Or is this a Destiny Spinner game? I could just get Calyx. Yeah, I'll wish for Calyx. And then attack with my 3-3 again. Don't have to worry about Spell Queller or Rattle Chains anymore. Jam another Honor Guard. I guess the Honor Guard could have attacked. But that doesn't make sense. Next turn, I, I can attack with both of them because they're 1-3s. Ooh. Whenever a creature with flying enters the battlefield under your control, this gets... All right, so this makes flying creatures cost less. Sure. And that gets pumped when you play other flying creatures. All right, Calyx. Let's see if my opponent has answers to this. 
I don't know what they could have, but let's hope they have nothing. So this is a 3-3 because of this. So I'm going to bind this to Baffling End. If they can bounce that Baffling End, I'm in a lot of trouble. I can attack for a 5 here. Oh, they had the 2-3 the flash. So they can double block a, an Honor Guard if they want. All right, that makes even more sense. I'm going to kill the bigger creature. I'm not worried about the static ability of the Watcher of the Spheres because they already have a zillion mana and they're Hellbent. So they're not going to gain a ton of mana advantage by having this passive ability in play. I'm going to block here. Having Calyx in play is worth more than a 1-1 one -one right now. Activate Calyx. Maybe we'll, act, we'll find something. Nope. Oh, he's like 50-50 to hit. Not very good. Right, here comes the squad. Uh-oh, we're getting cocoed. Maybe I will need the Sphere of Safety this game. All right, two birds. Uh, they can just bounce off of these, or they can take a double block. All right. I guess it's time for Sphere of Safety. Luckily, they don't trigger each other because of Honor Guard. All right, I'm Sphering up. It's going to cost you if you want to attack me. And they have a lot of mana. But let's hurt it. Yeah, we're starting to fall behind here. I'm at 23 to 3. And it's they're going to have to tap out. I guess one attacker kills Calyx, so they don't really need to make two attacks. All right. Time to find... What do I want? Uh, Raven thing? The Raven's Warning? Though Shark Typhoon is awfully good. That's going to mess up combat real bad for them. So they're going to have to pay a bunch of mana just to attack into my giant shark. So they paid six for the honor of attacking. Now I'm going to make a giant shark. Six, six shark. Just going all in here. Yeah. Shut it down. So now they've seen sphere of safety. I'm not sure if that matters or not, but the Cotley honor guard was actually insane. It shut down the, uh, the buff triggers on mausoleum wanderer and those uh, watcher of the spheres. So there's additional uh, play to that card more than I originally thought with just the the Rattle Chains and Spell Queller. I don't know if anything changes here. I guess I could bring in Detention Spear, just max out my, like full max out my removal, especially on the lower the curve a little bit uh, when I'm on the draw here. What's the cut if I do that though? Calyx was pretty good. The one I wished for was nice. Like, it's great that your sideboard is still... When you sideboard cards out, they're still accessible because of Raven's Warning. I think it, it it's either Calyx or Archon are the worst card left in the deck. And I think Calyx is worse than Archon. I guess I could cut a Growth Spiral because we're kind of playing on curve this whole game. And there might not be a good spot for Growth Spiral. Maybe that doesn't make sense, but... I'm in. Let's do it. Yeah, on the draw, I don't know if finding room for a growth spiral is necessarily going to happen. This is what I'm doing. All right, this hand's kind of chunky, but I am going to keep it and hope that they kept a handful of collected companies. I definitely didn't need another land there. So let's shut down the cage. Uh, that that turns off Coco at least, but they might just run me over without it. So we'll see how that goes. Baffling End is a great draw. Nuts. Alright, so I'm not gonna shock that in. Yeah, if they just have like the, the Bird Lord here, I could get obliterated. Because that puts four extra power and toughness on this board. Uh, so does that one. Alright, this isn't a spirit. That, that one only puts three extra power and toughness on the board. But they can double spell. Ouch! Yeah, it looks like I'm going to get goldfished before I even uh, put up a defense. So Shark Typhoon is a rebuy and absorbs a bunch of damage. So they're going to consider Shark Typhoon, of course. And this, it's the card that makes sense for me to have here. One, two, three, four, five. So they attack. All I can do is chomp here. And basically, if they just sit behind Spell Queller at this point, it's going to be really hard for them to lose. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 
Yeah, flash creature can put a bunch more damage on the board quickly. Oh, this is bad. I drew way too many lands. Uh, dead on board with no plays. GG's. Yep, run over. No appearance of Skylasher this game. I, I think that keep was defensible. Like it had two powerful cards in the matchup. I just uh, drew three lands instead of spells. Rough. Okay. Yeah, that matchup stuff. I understand why people play so much of it. I'm on the play for round number four with this six lander with Search for Escanta. Search for Escanta does a lot of work. But if this deck is fast at all, or if they have Thoughtseize, oh my god. <laughs> Can I keep this? Uh, I don't think so. All right, I'm going to mulligan it. I'll do the discipline lay down and get rewarded for it because the sand is much better. I think I actually want to bottom Starfield out of this hand, though maybe not. No, I'm going to bottom Fabled Passage. I have more lands than Starfields in the deck, so I'm going to play to play to drawing another land before I play to drawing another Starfield. Zagoth Triumph deck. So I'm going to play this tapped, which gives me history on turn three. All right, Lotus Cobra. All right, I'm not playing history on turn three. I'm playing Baffling End. Yeah, I'm, I'm not letting that card stick around. And I'm going to leave up white to cycle cast out because I do really want to hit land drops for this matchup. And I have the star field to eventually rebuy the cast out if I hit my land drops. I can probably safely assume this is some sort of Omnath deck I'm playing against. All right, found the land. That's good news. I'm going to lead on history. Like, cycling the shark does put a pressure into play the same as history, and it draws a card to hit that fifth land drop, and it feeds Starfield, but I think giving history the time to develop is a good thing. Oh, God. There's the Omnath. All right, guess it's go time. It would be a very good time to draw land. Now I wish I sharked. Got there. Okay, so I'm going to play Starfield, which can rebuy the, the cast out next turn. Let's see what sort of removal they have in their deck. Or what sort of combo kill to just ignore it. All right, that wasn't Fabled Passage. I'll take that as a win. But they can cast Bring Delight here. Oh, Aisha, Soul of the Wild. Uh, Non-token creatures you control are forest lands. Okay, so Omnath is a land... Oh, and this counts as a land. Wow, that's how the combo works. That's so sick. Now any creature they cast counts as a land drop. All right, I've never seen this before. This might be like a known thing in Pioneer, but I don't play a lot of the format, and that's pretty messed up. So now they get to four me with the with that. But I think the party's over. All right, well, Starfield's going to rebuy, cast out, and get rid of at least one of these things. Probably going to be the Isha. Is that what the card's called? Ashaya. Yes, put this into play, please. Wait, what? Enters the... Why didn't that happen? Oh, because it's non-land. Wow, that's so cool. All right, yeah, they got me good. Their creatures are all lands. Okay, attack with my shit. Uh, they can block one of them with their big monster. Uh, one, two, three. I can make a three, three shark, but I need a four, four to actually do anything. Yikes. I did not notice that interaction until it was too late. Not that I could have done anything different, but that was messed up. I also definitely should not have attacked. <laughs> I forgot this thing was an eight, eight. I'm just panicking because this card does crazy shit that I wasn't ready for. Wow, this deck is so cool. The thing that's happening right now, even though it's destroying me, is awesome. Lots of respect for it. Now let's see if a army of sharks can overpower what's happening here. Cycling a triome. That's one of the better ways they can use mana from my perspective. Alright, so if Omnath attacks, I'm blocking it with a 4-4 four, four shark. All right, Omnath did attack, which makes me glad I shocked in the, the Hallowed Fountain. 4-4 four, four shark. Draw a card. Block Omnath, chump the 10 10. Alright, so getting Omnath out of play is at least part of their combo. Slowed down. But, I mean, they have the Scarab God right there, so it's not like Omnath is really gone, gone. But let's start making sharks. 
So I did need a spell there, but it doesn't exile anything. Also, exile target creature. Okay, it, this does exile creatures at least. All right, so I'm going to cast my growth spiral to try to hit another spell this turn. All right, did hit another spell this turn. This is more creatures. I'll take them. This is a 3-3 three, three and a 2-2. Two, two. And it makes my monsters or my enchantments into monsters. But all right, let's see if this Omnath combo can beat the active shark starfield situation. All right, they didn't rebuy Omnath in response to this trigger, which is interesting. Like, do they have bigger plans or was that just a missequence? I'm kind of terrified if they have bigger plans. Okay, no, they just missed a damage and a scry on that. I'll take that. Uh oh, fabled passage. Not that I, not that they'd had trouble triggering Omnath in the past. This would be a great game to find my supreme verdict. Though that hurts me more than hurts them at this point. Baffling end being a creature is kind of risky because they could just like kill it and get a dinosaur. Genesis ultimatum. Shit. <laughs> I thought we were clawing back into this. All right, put any number of permanents from your top five cards onto the battlefield, then exile Genesis Ultimatum. All right. That's a lot of stuff. My goodness. All right, I'm going to let this clack stack clear. I can't even make sense of it in my brain. Like these Omnath triggers, none of them are actually doing what they say they do because... Or am, I think I'm taking eight from these Omnath, but the rest of them are fake news. At least I think that's how that works. Or if they put in multiple lands at the same time, how does Omnath count those? I honestly don't even know. <laughs> Let's just find out if I'm dead. I'll wait a second and then figure out if I've lost the game or not. They've ordered their stack. Now figure. let's figure out what happens with it. Okay, so I took four from the first Omnath trigger. That was the draw card trigger from the second Omnath. Valky's going to look at the baffling end in my hand then none of these other Omnath triggers are going to do anything, I think. So they found Growth Spiral. Only Growth Spiral off of Niv-Mizzet. That's not bad. Okay. That was a crazy stack. That did a lot less than I thought it would. Now, do they have attacks? They have a 13-13. I guess they can attack with pretty safely. Now, these are all land forests, so blocking with the cast out doesn't really do anything. I could block with history and reset it. But there's already a history in my graveyard. If I... I guess they have Scarab God, so like... Blocking to kill doesn't even really make sense. So I'm going to block with... My Vige Knight. Yeah, I think I want to keep my enchantment density up in play right now. So blocking with the Knight makes more sense to me than the history. So I get another history back. That's two more blockers. That was a good draw. All right, so I get two knights. Wow, yeah, because this came back in the main phase, or upkeep, and then the main phase triggers immediately. That's hot. So I'm going to cycle, or I'm going to cast Baffling End and exile this Valky. That is the one thing I can do here. I have five power in the air, but that's not enough. Uh, they can bring back one creature next turn, bring back the Omnath, but they already have one, so that's not going to drain me for two off Scarab God at least, but it will draw them an extra card. Uh, I could attack with Shark Typhoon, which is a 6-6, six, six, but if they trade off with niv that gives them something juicy to Scarab God. So I think I'm just going to pass the turn and try to build up to... I was about to say build up to one lethal attack, but they're at 42... And I am one turn away from dead between Omnath and Scarab God just on board, regardless of what else is going on in their hand. Well, that's shitty. <laughs> Exile all creatures and planeswalkers of mana value 3 or less. Uh, that's basically everything that I have. All right. Yep, I'm dead. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that was an insane interaction. A blanking cast out is a problem for me. What the heck? Exile target non-land permanent. These all say non-land on them. Every single one. Uh, Elspeth Conquers Death is still a card I want. All right. Uh, 
Takali Honor Guards are coming in. Both of the, I want both of them in the deck. Uh, I think I want one of the Archons in the deck. And then Draftigger's Cage doesn't do anything, I don't think. Because Scarab God exiles the creature and makes a token copy of it. It doesn't bring it back. And Ring Delight also exiles, so I don't think that's helpful. Conqueror's Death is very good, but I think Wishing for it's going to be better than having it in the deck. Starfield, I think having one to wish for when I want it, rather than getting them flooded in my hand, makes sense. i got to cut three more cards here. Uh, Baffling End doesn't seem super important for this matchup. So I ha that leaves me with one spot left. I could just bring in both Archons and try to slam. Yeah, like, I don't love this Skylasher blocking Niv-Mizzet plan. Detention Sphere. Yeah, that's another thing they can just destroy and refire on. All right. Th this is my plan, though this matchup is scary. Let's go Honor Guard. Early and often. I am not going to keep a one-lander. All right, here we go. This one I'm in for. I'm gonna send the shark typhoon because with the double grow spiral i just want every land and i want them to hit and i want to play this calyx on turn three so i have to get a forest with this so in deck building i realized that fabled passage is the only reason in this entire format to play a basic land over a pathway like are th is there any other reason Please let me know if I'm missing something. But when I was deck building, I was like, like the original list had a bunch of basics and four fabled passages. And I was like, wait, is this card even good? Oh, uh, let's see if I find my land. Didn't find my land. Probably doesn't matter. All right. Yeah, I, I did board out my baffling ends, forgetting about Lotus Cobra. That was a big part of the last game. So I, they might just Omnath me here and that's that's the game. Yeah, there's Omnath. I don't know if the game is over, but that's really good. And they even get to attack with Cobra if they want to, because I'm not blocking. Uh, when you keep a three lands with two Gross Spiral Hand and then miss your land drop. Ouch. Land? Alright, we found the land. What does it do for me? And what's in their hand? They have Bring Delight, Triome, Niv-Mizzet, Golos. <laughs> yeah, this this game doesn't feel good. So I'm going to Growth Spiral into Search for Iskanta and just hope that that's a reasonable plan because like, I can't bind Omnath to Raven's Warning with Calyx because Raven's Warning is dying next turn and then they get fresh Omnath triggers. Like I guess I could have just thrown Calyx in the graveyard to deny them Lotus Cobra for a turn. But they don't actually have any plays on 4 mana. That's pretty lucky that all their lands come into play tapped. Yeah, they have a handful of 5 drops. They could cycle a Triome, I guess. Nice. Alright. I got away with something there. Here comes 6 damage. So, search for his Kanta triggers. Uh, I do not want to put Forest in my graveyard. I do want lands. I'm going to draw that. Then I wish for... Elspeth Conquer's death, probably. That was the plan I set up in sideboarding. And then I can Calyx to find Omnath to the, the search. Then I can block Lotus Cobra if it attacks. They do get to Niv this turn or bring Delight. They just saw me put Conquer's death on top. Uh, so... They get their Omnath back if I ever flip my search for his Kanta. That's an unfortunate interaction. This looks like a Bring Delight, not a niv it, Or maybe it's Golos. It is Bring Delight for four. This could just get Falky, but ECD eats that too. Uh, it, it could just get something that destroys search for his Kanta. Okay, they are getting Valky. Oh, they're exiling the top of my deck, which is ECD. But I can cycle Shark Typhoon in response, don't worry. All right, I'm not giving them that. Sucks I don't get a shark, but it's important that I get to keep my conquer. 
Uh, they exile Temple Garden from me and Nihiri the Harbinger from themselves. So Nihiri can exile Search for Iskanta and get their Omnath back. The time to attack with Lotus Cobra. Alright. I'm taking the trade. This bird already drew a card. Now it's trading with a relevant card and protecting Calyx. Good job, bird. Uh, I'm going to put Hallowed Fountain in the graveyard. I think I'm done with lands for now. Ooh. Oh, I'm a mana short. And I couldn't have gotten both of these cards, so don't make fun of me for the denying the land there. All right, cast out looks pretty good. Yeah, that's going to matter eventually. And then I'm going to conquer the Tybalt. Yeah, it definitely sucks that I'm a mana short of this Honor Guard. That was that land drop I missed on turn three. A Cobra. Okay. This does not cast a five drop. All right, it casts the Nahiri that we already knew about, which gets them their Omnath back. Sure. That, that's rough, but okay. All right, so I have Cast Out and Honor Guard to work with here. I drew a Raven's Warning, and we're on Chapter 2 of Conquer. Let's dig with Calyx. Do like Shark Typhoon. Always like Shark Typhoon. And then I can... I guess I have to cast out Nahiri, because if I cast out anything else, they just exile it with Nahiri. So exile this with Nahiri and play Honor Guard. There it is. Their hand is Golos, niv it, and four mystery cards. God, they've drawn so many cards. If they kill Calyx this turn, Conquer gets to rebuy it. So this is actually a pretty good turn to have the, the shields down on Calyx, all things considered. A Niv and Golos are still pretty big, and they can still activate Golos next turn, even without the tutor. Or they can just play something enormous. Coma Cosmo Serpent. Beginning of your each upkeep, create a 3-3. Three, three. I've never... <laughs> I've read this card before, but not recently. Sacrifice another Serpent to choose one. Tap target permanent. Coma gains a destructive. Okay. All right, cool. So they are attacking Calyx, which honestly doesn't make any sense because they can see the ECD that's about to pop off. All right, so tap target permanent. Its activated abilities can't be activated and gains indestructible. All right. So I'm going to rebuy Calyx with Conquer immediately. I guess they can sack the Serpent to... Oh, no, they can't because this happens in my main phase and I have priority. So this comes back with an extra loyalty. And then I'm going to... All right, just going to read this one more time. Tap target permanent. Coma gains indestructible. Okay. Neither of those things are affected by what I'm trying to do here. It's going to get rid of Coma. Yeah, they should not have killed Calyx. They should have attacked my face because there's no other target. It's not like they were make, giving me a decision to make by killing Calyx. Like, that was literally just popping off. Like it or not, here it comes. All right, so Coma's out. And then I can play Raven's Warning and make a 1-1 one -one Shark and absorb some attacks. If I make a 1-1 one -one Shark, I might hit my land drop for the turn, but that doesn't actually matter. I think the surprise factor is worth more. Is it even a surprise? Have they seen the Shark Typhoon in my hand? I don't think so. I have no memory. If they can destroy this cast out, they just unlock Nihiri and Coma, though. <laughs> so let's hope that never happens. They're going to continue gaining life. This Starfield has to pop off. Like, if I can get... ACD looping with Starfield. That's an end game that might be able to overpower theirs. But overall, I'm not optimistic. Shadow's Verdict, no! Alright, that does get rid of most of their stuff, too. Yeah, that could have been a lot worse. And my Shark can block Omnath for the turn and protect Calyx for another activation. Yeah, I don't. Oh, Gross Spiral, I do care a lot about shit. That lets them cast Golos or Niv this turn. Wow, that was fucked up. They... Their deck is so good. It seems crazy to do anything other than this Omnath stuff in Pioneer. Like, why would you not? Okay, so they only hit Galazeth Prismari. ETB, make a treasure. Artifacts you control have tab add one mana of any color. Spend this ability only to cast this to sorcery. Okay, so that's... Alright, that's pretty cool, I guess. 
They are attacking Calyx. I will make my blocker. Draw my card. In finding Supreme Verdict here is actually still pretty good. Like clearing this board out. We know their hand. I mean, Golos is good, obviously. But their hand isn't like unbeatable right now. Is the second Calyx can exile Golos? One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. Yeah, they're not even close to like Golos plus activate all in one turn. All right, that doesn't matter. Let's look with Calyx. History and Raven. Yeah, I want the Raven. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I can play the second Calyx and bind Omnath to it. Like that will at least slow down what they're doing. Or bind Omnath to this cast out. Like I'm already all in on this cast out. Or I could just take 10 for a turn, put Starfield into play, and hope to overpower them on a following turn. One, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, I can't. The only double spell is Raven's Warning plus Calyx, which does remove Omnath and block Nidmizzet. But then they get Golos. Actually, yeah, I think I need to remove the Golos more than I need to remove any of this other stuff. So I think I have to invest in Starfield for a turn. Right, there's Starfield. And I'm going to play my White Source because that always seems to be the limit. Yeah, the, the Starfield can rebuy the Conquer next turn and put Supreme Verdict on top. Oh, this is stressful stuff, though. Oh, and they found Fabled Passage. So now they get all three triggers off of Omnath because they get to Golos for their second land, which casts the Prismari Boy. Oh, wait, the Golos, they get to activate immediately because of Omnath trigger. Yeah, I needed to exile Omnath. Whoops. <laughs> Yeah, I forgot about that mana. Yeah, I should have got rid of Omnath here. What do they got? All right, that actually was a pretty bad Golos, so I'll take that for now. Ugh. Terrifying, terrifying business. Does it get to attack and kill Calyx and deal six damage to me? I have a second Calyx. The Conquer has to exile Golos, I think. Uh, this deals four to me from Omnath. Oh, this hurts. Okay, so Starfield, rebuy, conquer. Yes, and get rid of Golos. Draw for turn. Oh, Shark Typhoon was great. All right, so my opponent's non-creature spells cost more next turn. Did I board in my Supreme Verdict? I did. I did, in fact, board in my Supreme Verdict. So I can't wish for Supreme Verdict here. What I can get is... I mean, Sphere of Safety doesn't matter. I could get a second Starfield. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I can play the second Starfield. That actually looks really good. Uh, does it look good, though? <laughs> Follow-up question. Is it actually good? So maybe I just get Detention Sphere. Now, I think I want the second Starfield. I'm going to have to overpower them with my engine. That's the only way out of this game. So I'm going to play... This, get a bird, Calyx, Calyx, and bind Omnath to my Starfield. Make my land drop. Okay, here we go. Is my engine online? Can we do it? I'm at 10. They have this dragon in their hand, this dragon in play. They have a lot of big top decks, but my, my board actually beats theirs right now. Their hand has to be good. Oh, uh, what does this do? Uh, search a library for any number of gods, put them onto the battlefield, and shuffle. All right, so I wonder if this that's actually a thing their deck does, or if this is just here to perfectly fix their mana. I don't know. All right, there's Prismari. Does not have haste. Uh oh, they have more stuff. Yashar the Implacable Earth. Uh, search a library for a forest or plains. Players can't pay life. Or sacrifice permanence to... Okay. I don't think that affects my deck. Right, so they have one card left in their hand. I'm definitely going to block here. And the Conquer is going to pop before my... Or no, Starfield happens before Conquer. That's right. Someday I'll figure this out. Do I want Raven's Crime or a Shark Typhoon? 
probably Shark Typhoon. Oh yeah, definitely Shark Typhoon because I'm drawing a second star field, which puts uh another five five into play and uh yeah, that's good stuff. And I am gonna rebuy the other Calyx because it just has more loyalty than the current one. Uh keep the big one. This game's getting crazy. Then one, two, three, four, five. Play Starfield, get a Shark Typhoon. This animates all my things. Calyx, Exile, Niv Mizzet, find it to Shark Typhoon. And then if I attack, they double block. Yeah, I still don't have attacks, but we are starting to take over. And I have the Shark Typhoon plus Raven's Warning on three, so I can tutor for a card on my sideboard immediately. Uh oh. I hope this is Niv and not Bring Delight, though I'm not excited about either, obviously. Bummer. This is whatever they want it to be, including just like Disenchant, which I'm pretty sure brings down my House of Cards. Nickel Bolas. Okay, so they cast this card, and each opponent discards a card. So I'll cycle in response. Putting another Typhoon in the graveyard is not bad. This at least makes material on the board. All right, Supreme Verdict. I'm not going to cast that one. That's all right. So this costs seven to flip. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yikes, what does it do? Draw two cards. Ten damage to target creature or planeswalker. Put target creature planeswalker from a graveyard on the battlefield. All right, so they flip this. And all of my... Yeah, I think if they just deal 10 to cast out, get back, Nihiri and Cosma, then... Yep, they found the line. I'm dying to my own star field here. If that wasn't a creature, that wouldn't do anything important. But now they can exile another enchantment with Nihiri. Yep, that that can't brought the house crashing down. They get back Omnath too. Yikes. Bad news bears, team. I wish I had that Supreme Verdict now. They don't have any attacks, so I'll take that. They can use uh, Coma to turn off Calyx for the turn, which is probably a really good idea. So I bring this back and exile. What do I exile? They're all so good. They all beat me. Every single one of them beats me. Uh, I don't think it's Coma, even though Coma's terrifying. I think it has to be Nahiri, because that just exiles target permanent, basically. If they tap and uh, Humility my Calyx before I can answer it, I'm in a lot of trouble. Okay, so if I choose an enchantment here, I can put it into play into my hand with Calyx. Is there an enchantment that I want? Destiny Spinner does play, kind of. So I'll grab the Sphere of Safety. That does tax them at least a little bit, and it puts... A bunch of power and toughness into play due to shark typhoon all right here's some more stuff okay uh i didn't have an attack that kills nickel bolus yeah i i think i'm just losing to nickel bolus bummer that was close for a turn oh yeah they can just sack two serpents to tap two sharks and they have enough mana they have to pay one two three four five or four yeah, they can definitely pay through Sphere of Safety. <laughs> uh, Outmuscled. Too bad. Yeah, that one turn where Nickel Ballas was able to break open my the nesting doll was too good. Wait. Players can't pay life or sacrifice non-land permanents. Okay, so they actually can't activate Coma. Oh, they can sacrifice Fabled Passage, though. So Coma's a 6-6. Six, six. Yasharn the a 4-4. Four, four. So I actually don't want to kill Yasharn because it's doing a lot of... It's helping me. I don't know. What are they spending mana for in the middle of combat? Are they putting three gods from their deck into play? Wait, what just happened? Why did they spend all their mana? Uh, what just... I, I'm so confused. All right. I'm going to double block this one and chump block this one. I have no idea what just happened. We all saw that, right? They just tapped all their lands in the beginning of combat, then nothing happened. I'm super confused. All right, so Starfield <laughs> gets to trigger, I guess. Um, I need to cast out probably Nickel Bolas. I cast out Nickel Bolas. You're out of here. Straw spell for Shark Typhoon. Shit. Oh, I get to Calyx. 
Yes. All right, loyalty counter on that one. Keep the big one. And I need a, a spell. Like a second star field, maybe? Is that better than Shark Typhoon? Is it better than Cast Out? All of this is so scary. Uh, if I cast out Omnath, that does slow down a lot of what they're capable of. Shark Typhoon could be two spells, or is that just too greedy? All right, I'm going to take Cast Out, play Glacial Fortress. I'm going to cast out Omnath. That turns my monsters on. Oh, they had to pay for a Sphere of Safety. That's what all that mana they tapped was. Okay, okay, I figured it out. Jeez. Um, I have... still don't think I'm attacking. They're at 39. I don't think we're going to have time for a game three, even if I do end up winning this one. This has been crazy. This is a great match. I thought I was going to do stuff today, but this league ended up taking thousands of years. But that's okay. That means we're playing great magic. Uh, they have another Omnath. Cool. That draws a card. They have the Fabled Passage sitting in play. So that's at least one land drop. If they have any basics left in the deck. I mean, how many can you play in a deck like this? And one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. They can only attack with one creature. The Sphere of Safety is actually doing work. And Starfield's going to get back Conquer again. Let's go. Let's go. I'm going to exile Omnath. The Sharn remains good for me. I think having more spells is more important than binding. Uh, search for his Kanta. I think I want the Raven's Warning. That's just more flying. And a little bit of life, a little life cushion. So I have a lot of flying now to their very little flying. I think I can attack with these two flyers. I think we're winning this game now. They still have some banger top decks, probably, but we're currently ahead again. Wiggled our way back into being ahead somehow. Deafening Clarion. That kills some of my creatures, but not most of them. Oh, do they have a second one? The full bust open the the egg doll. Yeah, okay. So they get all of their permanents that are under my stuff back. Oh god. Oh god. I thought we were doing well. Alright, so I'm gonna have to discard the land. They get growth spiral out of their niv. Their nibs are actually pretty bad in this deck. In I'm still losing to them, but they have not been impressive. Still have Starfield. Okay, they did have a basic left. There's no way there's any more. There's one of each in play. So this Omnath Blast puts me to five. All right, Starfield. What do I need here? I think Conquer. Uh, I'm dead to all of their permanents, so I'm going to get back Conquer and at least exile the Nickel Bolas that can flip into an unbeatable Planeswalker. Uh, that was not what I needed. Calyx, find me something. An additional Starfield. That's not quite enough. Uh, incredible match, but the double deafening Clarion, while all my enchantments were creatures, buried me. Great games. Seriously great games. That was awesome. On the draw for the final round, I'm going to keep this hand. It's full of cycling options, and it's got its mana set up. So I noticed after the game, last game, that the Omnath trigger, the three land Omnath trigger, deals four damage to each opponent and each Planeswalker you don't control, which is how they snuck that. Like, my Calyx was on seven, ready to replenish when they're on their double Clarion turn. But Omnath coming back in and hitting all three lands meant that I couldn't do the, the replenish ultimate and just win the game anyway. So that was actually even closer than I originally thought it was. This game is not looking like it's going to be close. Let's see how much they actually pop off with here. How many Burning Tree Emissaries they have. Oh, at least two. Oh god. Other satyrs you control. Alright, this is not a satyr. That's lucky. But they are going to start drawing cards here. Which is not what I want this deck to do. I played this land because I knew I was going to cycle cast out against the land of war elf start. Uh, this is looking slow and painful. At least my hand. <laughs> my hand is slow. 
Theirs is fast. The game's going to be quick and painless, but my hand is slow and painful. Though I do get to history this turn, which will soak up some damage at least. Oh, they're just attacking with Lanoral. All right, no, change their mind. Like Miss your second land drop, attack with Lanoral on turn three. No flex given. All right, so I'm taking six here. I'm going to take two from my Temple Garden when I cast History of Benalia, and then I'm just going to lose. Is that what this game is? Uh, Gruel Spellbreaker. Yeah, that's a 4-4 four, four Trample. Uh, there's a good chance the game is already over. Oh, Baffling it. Nice of you to show up. All right, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, I am not going to do this. I am going to baffle the, the Spellbreaker. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, if I top deck Supreme Verdict, I'm actually in pretty good shape. Uh, Raven's Warning does gain life, but history actually trades. Uh, if I take six this turn, oh, Rabble Master, that's a card too. Okay, uh, it's uh, it's Supreme Verdict or bust here. Here comes seven damage. One out to roll them all. Raven's Warning is not what I needed. Uh, yeah, so I would go to seven and take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I'm dead. Okay. Okay, that was a complete ranching. I kept sort of a mid-range hand, and my opponent had a double Burning Tree Emissary start on the play. So, obviously, now we know what we need to mulligan for. Need to do better than that. But Sphere of Safety, this is one of those matchups that it just wins. I want Supreme Verdict. Do I want... No, I think I want one in the sideboard to wish for, because Raven's Warning is still sort of part of the plan. I want a Sphere in the deck. Starfield is not going to come up until much later. Honor Guard is probably good. It bricks Burning Tree Emissaries, both as 1-3s in combat and their ability on the stack. Uh, Search for Iskanta might be a little slow and hopeful in this matchup. Destiny Spinner is just a 2-mana two 2-3. Two, like, maybe I just bring in bodies. I don't think I go as far as Skylasher, like just trading isn't good, but 1-3 butts on 2 mana is probably better than Search for Iskanta for 2. I do like the Verdict as a wish. Uh, I want one of the Archons in the deck and one to wish for. Or do I just... I think I just want both Archons in the deck. Yeah, forget about wishing. I'm going to wish for Supreme Verdict if I'm doing that. Yeah, so what is the worst card left here? It's probably Calyx, or it's probably Cast Out. Because Calyx will do most of what Cast Out does a lot of the time, but Cast Out cycles for one, and that's important to keep things going. Yeah, I think it is Calyx. Oh, I have to cut two things. Yeah, I did just bring in two Archons. So I'm going to cut two Calyxes. Is that right? I think that is a reasonable thing to do. I can still wish for it if I want it. Ooh, probably want a Detention Sphere. Already clicked OK, though. Yeah, I definitely want a Detention Sphere over... One of my, probably the third star field. Whoops. If we get a game three, I'll make that change. Okay, this hand is about as good as I can hope for in the matchup. Lead on my tap Talib Fountain. Send it back. They had a tap Stomping Ground. All right, slow start. I like it. And time for Honor Guard. If they were planning on an explosive Burning Tree Emissary hand, they have a bunch of two mana two twos in their hand. It's Grizzly Bear. I think the Raven, Raven's Warning, is my favorite draw in the deck, but I'm happy to just cycle Shark Typhoon if that doesn't materialize. Got him. All right, a second Honor Guard. I think I'm just going to pass, and if they attack with Burning Tree Emissary, I'll cycle Shark Typhoon and double block. This Honor Guard has already defended my honor. A Bone Crusher Giant, just straight up. Fair enough. So they could have attacked and then used Stomp to clear the Honor Guard, but they seem to believe that just having a 4-3 in play is better than that, which might be true. I mean, I'm not saying it's not. All right, good. Found not only the land, but the green land. Nice. So now I can get a little greedy. I think I have life total to play with here, so I'm going to Growth Spiral and then also Baffling End. Ooh, that's a good one. So Baffle this Bone Crusher. And then just leave my squad back because I want Archons of Sun Grace to win this game starting next turn. Honor Guard is really good in Pioneer. 
This has just been like a card I want in every matchup all the time. All right, we go in haste or big. Big is the answer. Okay, so I'm going to take a turn casting Archon of Sun's Grace. And then the following turn, when I baffling end the Gruel Spellbreaker, I'll get double my money. And I just have this giant flying lifelinker in the meantime. Probably could have attacked with my shark there, but I'm still not going to block with Archon because I don't want them to be able to stomp it or just like shock it. Oh, Glorybringer. Yikes. Uh, that one answers my Archon pretty well. Okay, here comes the pain. Yeah, I'm kind of bummed out how perfectly that lined up. <laughs> Ouch. All right, Archon's gone. It's fine. If I draw a land and get to Raven's Warning and Baffling end this turn, that would be pretty great. Didn't draw a land. I think I need to baffle the Spellbreaker before I do anything else. Yeah, so I'm going to do that. Let's get that card out of here. The Glorybringer is currently sleepy. I put another big butt into play. Maybe I'm supposed to Growth Spiral there instead of playing the second Honor Guard. I can attack now. I think that's fine. I also could have blocked Glorybringer last turn with my Shark. Save four damage. Let's hope that doesn't hurt. Doesn't come back to get me. Is Pioneer really at a point that two color decks need to play Mana Confluence? Or is that just like... Or do they have a Splash card that I should be scared of? Anyway, Calyx is going to eat this Glorybringer. Find it to this baffling end. Again, as as always, if they have anything at all that can remove baffling end, my nesting doll explodes. But luckily, most of their abilities are attached to creatures, which Honor Guard does a lot of work to slow down. All right, they conceded. Ooh, that was a close one. That glory bringer almost got me. I'm going to make the change that I... I missed the first time. Uh, Detention Sphere should be in just a lower curve thing. Starfield is not going to matter unless the board's already stable and Detention Sphere helps me get there. So I'm pretty comfortable with that setup. I have four cast outs, two Calyx, and Supreme Verdict that can answer, and Detention Sphere that can answer the Glory Bringer. So I still think that the Conquer is better as a tutor target or a wish target than a, a card in my deck. And I guess maybe I'm just off Starfield entirely because Calyx, the exile on Calyx is huge and I can wish for a Starfield if that's appropriate, but I basically never want to draw it. So that makes sense. All right. I like that change too. Back in we go. Final round of the league. Okay. I am on the draw with Honor Guard and Supreme Verdict. I'm going to keep this. My mana base kind of hurts. Uh, I would very much like to find a... Oh, my opponent's on five. I'll take that. I might need it. But I would very much like to find a pain-free land. Just a, a pathway or a basic Fabled Passage. Because if I have to shock my whole way up this curve, it's going to sting. But hopefully Honor Guard on two will absorb a lot of damage. But being on the draw means that the Emissaries get to pop before I get to do anything. All right, Baffling End's a great draw. It's not as good as land. I, I do need a land soon. I actually need two, but I'll, I'll take one to start. I'm not greedy. All right, how bad's it going to be? There's one. They did multi five. And, okay, yeah, they're just stomping me. That's a deal. Uh, Still not a land. I have to shock in this Honor Guard. Not excited about that. I am excited that the 1-3 butt lines up well against the 2-2 attacker, and then I have the baffling end for this 4-3 if they cast it this turn. You better believe I'm going to block Burning Tree Emissary if they attack. Are we going haste or big? I kind of like haste here, if I were playing, but it's their deck. Uh, they went big, okay. Come on deck, give me the land. Please. Okay, good. And it's even the white one. So I'll play the white half of this. So Supreme Verdict is one away now. Do I want a Raven's Warning? I think I do. Yeah. I'm going to Raven's Warning. That does gain two life on the way in. And that gives me draw step plus the bird connection to find the land for Supreme Verdict. And I think that that's what this entire game is going to be about. Like I might not even need Supreme Verdict. They're down to two cards in hand to my handful of answers. 
But the fourth land is going to be important one way or the other. It's the old extremely honest pre-combat Bone Crusher Giant. I would have attacked with Burning Tree Emissary there with mana up. Okay. Now they're attacking without mana up. I'll just block with my 1-3. I think they figured out the bird is important after they spent their mana for the turn. Take the easy block to Kotli Honor Guard. Best creature in Pioneer. I did not find the land. Let's see if the bird can find the land. Get in there, young one. See what's in that hand. And we got the trigger. It found the land. Okay. And their hand is two lands. Okay. This is kind of interesting from here. Like, I can just start controlling this board and skip the Supreme Verdict. Or I could jam Supreme Verdict and send them pack in. I think I like Baffling End on the Gruel Spellbreaker. That one has Trample and Hexproof on their turn, and that lets me Growth Spiral. And that develops in a way that that is nice on this board that I'm actually doing pretty good against. Because Honor Guard is invalidating a lot of what they're doing. Oh, I think they just conceded. All right, uh, we put up a two and three with this Starfield deck. I think that I was not respectful enough of the the aggro decks in the format. Like getting run over by spirits when I specifically stacked my sideboard to beat spirits is kind of embarrassing. Like maybe I just don't play enough Pioneer to really know what know how hard that deck hits. Uh, but that's the same thing I said after my last Pioneer League. I was like, oh, I wish I played four Skylasher. I played three here, but this sideboard is a little different than a normal one because it's a wishboard and that it eats up a lot of space. Uh, the the Niv-Mizzet deck, I think I just want more Takatli Honor Guards. Like, just play one Sphere of Safety to wish for when you're ready. Get another Honor Guard in there. Um, I don't know if you need two Graph Diggers Cage. Like, it's good against Phoenix and Coco decks, but again, like, you can wish for it if you want. But yeah, balancing the wishboard is tough. We never need a Destiny Spinner. That never came up and was never important. So that's actually a slot you can cut. Like, you're going to win games without that. So get rid of a Spinner, one of the Spheres, and add two more Honor Guards to the deck. So maybe two Honor Guards is too much. Maybe it's an Honor Guard and a Dranath Magistrate. Because Dranath Magistrate also stops uh, Bring Delight. So there are some Hate Bears here that we can mess with, and... I think that there is a correct number of them or a correct uh, configuration of them. It's probably three honor guards and a Dranath Magistrate would be my instinct, but you're going to have to play around with that. The main deck felt pretty solid. Uh, there are a couple cards that you can use instead of Search Fairs Kanta to blunt aggro decks like uh, Aether Meltdown, and there's another one that's like snake related. Uh, basically, one blue flash enchanted creature gets minus X minus O. So there are ways to blunt aggro that's better than search for his Kanta. But I think the four Ravens warning does a good job of that. Like gain two life and produce a blocker and then wish for Supreme Verdict is a pretty serious thing. You don't need four Starfield in the main. Uh, maybe, maybe you should actually be playing like two of this card with one in the sideboard. And then you can add conquer or another verdict to the main there's a lot of ways you can tune this uh i'm gonna leave it alone as is and leave it up to the the viewers to to play around with it if you want to if you put any work into this please let me know show it to me and i'd be happy to check it out but this was a lot of fun this engine seems really powerful if you can find a way to shore up that niv mizzet matchup the five color omnath bring to light niv mizzet matchup then this starts to become a contender. Like it's crazy that there's a deck in the format that whose top end is better than Starfield of Nyx and Shark Typhoon. Like that's really impressive. And you have to respect that if you're going to play this deck. But those those are my thoughts about this. Paper, thank you so much for asking me to play this. It was a lot of fun working on this deck and a lot of fun playing it. Everyone else, thanks for watching. Remember, if you want to see me play your deck, hit me up on Patreon. And while you're here, remember to hit like and subscribe for the YouTube channel. And I'll see you next time.